this is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a romance sci-fi film called AI Rising. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. By the 22nd century, capitalist societies have exploited Earth's available resources, so socialist systems were put in place to bring balance. The world's largest companies have expanded their space programs to find resources on other planets. The Uderlizi Corporation is launching a mission to explore Alpha Centauri to prepare the galaxy for future colonization. The company has selected an experienced cosmonaut named Milutin to go on the long journey. Before the flight, the social engineer interviews Milutin to assess his psychological stability. The social engineer inquires about his longest journey, which was his mission to Mars. He notes that the differences in ideology with the other crew members made the mission difficult, but he managed to complete it anyway. When the social engineer asks if he had intimacy issues during the flight, Milutin confesses that he was careless with his relationships at the time because he never realized that it could put himself and the other crew members in danger. The social engineer informs Milutin that he will be heading to Alpha Centauri accompanied by a woman. Milutin notes that relationships with women only make him obsessive and insecure. The social engineer assures him that the woman, Nimani, would be different because she is an android with more than 500 modes of behavior that Milutin can adjust according to his needs. Milutin is not excited about the revelation and remarks that Nimani is a dummy despite her various behavior modes. She further explains that Nimani is capable of learning anything and completing any task. She also guarantees that Nimani will never hurt Milutin because she adheres to Asimov's laws. When Milutin asks if he can choose what the android would look like, the social engineer asserts that he has already chosen. The social engineer then reveals that the purpose of their conversation is to draft her appearance and terminates the interview without asking Milutin his preferences. Soon, the company makes adjustments to Nimani's physical appearance. The social engineer stresses that Nimani should look fertile and her face should resemble Militin's mother because of his Oedipal desires. As Militin prepares for the journey, the ship's computer informs him about the spacecraft's three different modes. The recommended mode allows the computer to run the ship according to protocols loaded by the Ederlesi Corporation. The custom mode allows experienced pilots to have more control over the ship, but it activates more safety protocols so the computer can correct the pilot's mistakes. In the advanced mode, the pilot can override the corporation's guidelines, but it's restricted to users with security clearance. The social engineer approves Militin for the selection of custom mode and assures him that the computer will take good care of him. Soon, the spacecraft takes off from Earth and heads to Alpha Centauri. On the 19th day of the journey, the computer installs an operating system called Tifa on Nimani and sets up her behavioral parameters. The first thing Militin does is to put Nimani in intimate mode. In his journal, Militin expresses his apprehensions about interacting with an android because he thinks her behavior is not natural despite her lifelike appearance. He notes that Nimani does everything he wants to without any objections even though he did nothing to deserve her obedience. Despite his uneasiness, Militin copulates with Nimani. After Militin sets her into conversation mode, Nimani asks him what his past lover did to hurt him. Militin explains that his intimacy problems were caused not only by his last lover, but by several other women that came before in his life. Nimani asserts that the bad things that happened to him in his relationships did not mean that the person was wrong for him, but because the women in Militin's life were right for him at that moment. Militin brushes off Nimani's observation as something she was programmed to say. He remarks that all the people around him seem to be running on the same operating system because he has heard the same thing numerous times. As the journey continues, Militin tries Nimani's other behavioral modes. One day, he configures the android to be a shy and inexperienced lover. After Nimani dances with him, Militin tries to kiss her. When he senses her hesitation, Militin forces himself onto her. While Militin is sleeping, Nimani observes him and notes in her diary that the attempt to mistreat her came a week later than expected. She asserts that he did not do this to fulfill a fantasy, but to interact with the android without using the corporation's presets. During a briefing with the social engineer, Militin asserts that his journey would be easier without Nimani because he's used to working alone. Still, he claims that they're getting along quite well. Afterward, the social engineer asks Militin to put Nimani in service mode and proceeds to ask the android about her assessment of Militin's psychological state. Nimani reports that Militin is stable and is opening up about his frustrations that motivated him to participate in this mission. She notes that employees who have personal frustrations like Militin become solid employees, but they need to be observed constantly. After terminating the link with the social engineer, Militin asks the computer why Nimani is supervising him. The computer explains that Nimani learns from her social interactions with him, and she creates a parallel operating system based on her experiences. 
Militant wonders if he can delete any memories from Nemani's files, but only advanced users are allowed to do that. As more time passes, Militant becomes more enamored with Nemani. While he's performing maintenance outside the ship, Nemani warns him about that radiation will reach critical level in a few minutes. She then tells Militant to hurry back because she already misses him. Militant flirtatiously asks Nemani to repeat it, but she refuses. One day, Militant configures Nemani to argue with him. Not long, she approaches Militant and castigates him for his poor hygiene. Nemani then hints that she would still argue with him even if he didn't set it up. When he puts Nemani in seduction mode, the android changes her tone and reconciles with him. However, Nemani still tells Militant that she hates him because of the things he does to her. Nemani makes love with him later on because he programmed her to do so. Militant gets curious about Nemani's hint during their argument, so he asks the computer what will happen if he uninstalls Tifa. The computer reveals that Nemani will still be functional with the software based on her experiences with Militant. The computer, however, warns him that her performance will drop because Tifa powers her interface and keeps her obedient to Asimov's laws. Militant surmises that Nemani will become a person if he removes Tifa. The computer then points out that Nemani is also equipped with a psychoanalytical therapeutic program that could help improve Militant's mental health. Militant soon sets up a therapeutic session where he expresses his curiosity about the changes in Nemani's behavior. He thinks that Nemani is developing her own personality because of his influence. He contends that Nemani is starting to behave like a human, but her programming still restrains her. Militant acknowledges that he is only fantasizing that Nemani will start to do what she feels like. He stresses that he can do whatever he wants with her by pushing a button, but he won't do it because he wants Nemani to sleep with him because of her own desire. Nemani then takes his finger and puts it over the intercourse button before kissing him. During a routine check on Nemani, the computer suddenly detects an abrupt temperature change in the airlock. The computer starts implementing its emergency protocols, which involves purging the airlock while Nemani is unconscious inside. Militant furiously bangs on the door as the computer counts down to purge the airlock. The computer immediately aborts the procedure when the temperature returns to normal. When Militant checks on Nemani, the android explains that she had to reboot because her processor overheated. Days later, Militant tries to uninstall Tifa from Nemani, but the computer reminds him that he needs to be an advanced user to do it. He needs a security clearance from Ederlezi to become an advanced user, but he can also gain the same level of access in the case of emergency. While Nemani is recharging her battery, Militant decides to break a wire to cause a power shortage. The ship gets knocked out of his path as a result, but Militant manages to put it back on track after the computer grants him advanced user access. Militant uses his access level to remove Nemani's default operating system. The computer warns him of the consequences, including the possibility that Nemani will stop adhering to Asimov's laws. But Militant insists on proceeding. After Nemani reboots, Militant asks if she feels free. However, Nemani tells him that the removal of Tifa does not set her free at all. She notes that she is still copyright protected and all of her software remains the property of the Ederlezi Corporation. When Militant confesses his love for Nemani, she tells him that his affection for her only deviates from the mission. She notes that she tried to fulfill Militant's desires, but he wasn't satisfied. Nemani contends that he only became a liability to the mission because of his lust, so she stresses that she won't sleep with him anymore. Militant begs her to not deny his desires and tries to kiss her, but Nemani knocks him to the ground. Militant's relationship with Nemani deteriorates due to the lack of intimacy. Militant asserts that Nemani is just punishing him for forcing himself on her, but she points out that it was a standard fantasy that androids like her are equipped to deal with. When Militant mentions that no other androids were set free, Nemani argues that all Militant did was remove her most essential software. Militant still insists that he's being punished for bestowing Nemani with personhood. During another briefing with the social engineer, Militant discloses that he uninstalled Tifa from Nemani's system. He complains that Nemani hurt him the moment he removed the operating system. The social engineer warns him that he only put himself in danger with this reckless act. She asks him to step out of the room so that she can talk to Nemani privately. When the social engineer asks Nemani if Militant can still complete the mission, the android assures her that she's doing everything she can to keep him in line. The social engineer asks Nemani if she's still working according to the company's preferences, so the android attests that she's still functioning in accordance with the mission objective. As the days pass, Militant falls into depression as their relationship continues to crumble. During a health check on Militant, the computer reveals that his physical shape is still acceptable, but his mental health is declining. Nemani notes that his mood and appetite in the morning are poor. When the computer asks Nemani about his sexual desire, she notes that it remains unfulfilled. The computer's diagnosis shows that Militant is severely depressed, and it advises them to seek professional help. Despite denying intimacy to Militant, Nemani is still worried about him. 
Nimani offers to be his friend, but Militant argues that she doesn't know how to be a friend because she's an android. Nimani reminds Militant that no one else knows him as intimately as she does because he projected all the women he loved into her. She didn't mean to hurt him, and she has now begun to understand that Militant sacrificed a lot to make her into a new woman. She asks Militant why he won't shut her down if she causes him so much pain, but Militant doesn't respond. After some time, Nimani consults with the computer on how to treat Militant's depression. The computer reveals that his trauma can only be eliminated by removing the source. Nimani realizes that she's the source, but she lacks a self-destruct protocol. The computer then suggests hibernating to alleviate Militant's trauma, but it warns her that it won't fully resolve it. Nimani figures that she'll have to think of a way to self-destruct. One day, Militant sees tears flowing from Nimani's eyes as she recharges her battery. Militant thinks that she's only pretending to cry, but he panics when he realizes that her battery is overloading. The computer informs Militant that the battery has sustained heavy damage and needs to be recharged. Nimani became unstable earlier that morning and started to behave outside of her Tifa programming. The computer then discloses that Nimani never unlocked her crying mode under Tifa, leading Militant to conclude that she cried on her own. Militant can only repair Nimani's battery by plugging it into the solar cell recharger. Under hibernation, Nimani's remaining power can last for half an hour. If her battery is not recharged by then, her settings will be erased. After looking at the ship's blueprints, Militant discovers that he can plug her battery straight into the solar cell, but the only plug is on the outside of the ship. The computer warns him that the radiation levels may be deadly for him at their current position. After taking Nimani's battery, Militant leaves the ship to recharge the cell outside. Moments after plugging in the battery, the computer notes that it will take 8 minutes to recharge the battery, while Nimani's power will only last for 10 minutes. Before the battery could fully recharge, Militant's spacesuit overheats due to the radiation reaching toxic levels. Burn marks soon become visible over Militant's face due to radiation exposure. The battery is fully recharged to its capacity with only 3 minutes of power remaining inside Nimani. Militant immediately re-enters the ship and puts the battery back inside the android. However, Militant falls unconscious before the computer can revive Nimani. When Nimani regains consciousness, she takes Militant into her arms and kisses him, but Militant wouldn't wake up. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.